America's 36th president is best known as the man who never wanted to pull out of the war in Vietnam. But one thing he did love to pull out was his giant cock, constantly. All the time. Lyndon B. Johnson was known as LBJ for short. But as we'll soon find out, there was nothing short about him. America loves freedom, okay? And so too must its commander in chief. This one freed the nipple. This one even freed the slaves. And this one apparently felt compelled to free Willy at any given opportunity. So how did we get here? What does this mean for America? And most importantly, where was Lyndon Baines Johnson's penis during the Kennedy assassination? Pull out some popcorn and cut a hole in the bottom of it because we're about to start this lecture on one precocious presidential pecker. Lyndon B. Johnson and his at the time infant dick entered this world in Johnson City, Texas, a town named after his father's cousin, James Polk Johnson. That basically makes him like small town royalty, right? Hey kid, didn't your pappy cousin found this here municipality? Have a free soda pop straight out the jerk on me, I. Right? Oh, really? No fooling? I love when people found cities and other people are like, what are you gonna name it? And they're like, uh, I think, yeah, I think fucking me. Yeah, this is me city. That's a pretty big dick move, which as we will see, runs in the Johnson family. I guess. Technically, Lyndon was born right outside of the city in a farmhouse. Like, he's the fucking baby Jesus. Just got shot out the snatch, covered in viscous fluid, straight into a pile of hay and manure like a real man. He later became president of his 11th grade class, presumably with his dick hanging out behind the podium during his acceptance speech. As he matured into an older, more distinguished Johnson, he married a woman named Ladybird. You may know her for The Lake in Texas and The Dog in King of the Hill. The feet, the hand, the tail, all moving as one unit. No wonder this proud bitch was named after our former first lady. Then he became a senator and vice president under Kennedy. Yada, 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 plot progression. Vice President Johnson's dick was a mile high on Air Force One shortly after Kennedy experimented with the no top of my head look popularized by Britney Spears. The plane was flying to pick up JFK's lifeless body from Parkland Hospital in Dallas and LBJ was like, ooh, ooh, can I come? Can I come? Can you make me president on the plane too? Please, please. I won't even take my dick out. I promise. Probably with his fingers crossed behind his back and shit. Because of the unprecedented nature of the situation, they didn't have a proper inauguration. They just got on the plane and were like, fuck it. Do it live! And they just swore Lyndon in right there in the cabin. I love this photo for several reasons. First, why are there so many goddamn people on this plane? Like, how's this man's coffin even gonna fit on here? Also, like, who are these people? Were they just having like a black tie gala at the White House and somebody was like, hey everybody, president got shot again. Anybody wanna check out his body? Maybe poke him with a stick or something? If we're quick, he might still be warm. Second, this dude's face, awesome. It looks like he was trying to roll up a joint down there and then was just very startled that somebody was taking a picture of him. He's just like, hey, do you mind? This is a very emotional time for me right now. I'm trying to smoke down. There's also this picture probably taken right after they were all done and the photographer was like, oh shoot, I forgot we invented color already. All right, everybody go back, look colorful. This guy's still got that face on him though. He's on joint number two getting foiled again. So now LBJ is officially made president on board Air Force One. The death of JFK still fresh, emotions running bare and raw. But this wouldn't be the only time something was bare and raw on Air Force One during his presidency, if you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. Now, you know, I'm sure LBJ was probably sad that a portion of Kennedy's head ended up on his wife's face, but you gotta imagine a part of him was just like, Score! just looking down in his pants like, you hear that little buddy? We're gonna be president. Oh, really? No fooling? There was allegedly nothing little about his buddy though. From all reports, Johnson had a pretty massive, uh, Johnson. He referred to it affectionately as Jumbo. And apparently he was one of those guys whose dick is longer soft than it is hard, so it just had immense swinging potential. He would often utilize this as a weapon against the communists. No, I'm just kidding. He just showed it to everybody whenever possible. Staff, secretaries, journalists, secret service. If you were in the White House between 1963 and 1969, you were gonna see the president's dick. There was just no getting around it. Literally, like it was physically difficult to get around. It's, it's, it's enormous. If he was wrapping up a piss sesh at the urinal and somebody came into the bathroom, he'd whip around to face them 
Nani? Presumably with such force that the other guy got hit with the little droplets of pee that are still in the chamber. And he just talked to the guy about stuff while he kind of swang his dick around. And that stuff was usually just commenting on how big his dick was. On one of these occasions, he's quoted as saying, Have you ever seen anything as big as this? Oh, uh, I don't know, Lyndon. Maybe our country's gross national debt. Get the fuck out! You're fired! My dick is bigger than the day! But occasionally he'd just talk about like, whatever was going on at the time. Legislation, economic policy, trouble with the missus, you name it. So, let's just take a moment to really picture it. It's your first day at the White House. You just got hired as a fucking secretary or a chef or something. I don't know what people do there. You're sweaty. You're nervous. You ate a shit ton of whatever the 1960s equivalent of Taco Bell was the night before and now you've gotta make a run for the border. And it is pretty bad. You've got like eight minutes in a life or death situation to not shit your pants. So you're doing your little Cupid shuffle down the hallway trying to look inconspicuous. You casually push open the bathroom door and you walk inside. The President of the United States of America whips around from the urinal, spritzing you with piss. <laughs> He's got his pants around his ankles because you just know this is the type of dude that pisses with his ass out like a fucking eight year old. And he just starts talking about his day. Man, I tell you, these damn hippies are gonna be the death of me. Vietnam, Vietnam. Take a shower, you tripped out ingrates. He's got his dick in hand, just swinging it around absentmindedly. He's not even looking at you, he's just talking at the upper corner of the bathroom. Now, of course, we're gonna make the acid and the pot illegal so we can start locking them up and such, but it's just taking too damn long. I can smell them from here, the damn commies. Hey, have you ever seen anything as big as this? And then you just quietly shit your pants right there in front of the president, his dick in hand, he's still talking about hippies. And you just stand there for another six minutes, just hoping he doesn't notice the shit in your pants until he finally zips up, heads to the door without washing his hands, gives you a slap on the back, tells you he knows you had shit in your pants the whole time and that he's been there too. God. I love this country. Now, swinging his dick around was not the only thing President Johnson liked to do in the bathroom. I, no, no, no. This was practically his favorite fucking room in the White House. He'd dictate his notes from the toilet to his secretary. He'd hold cabinet meetings while he was shitting. He had a phone line installed up into the stall so he could take calls while he was on the throne. He was literally making orders about dropping bombs while he was dropping bombs. Yeah, just, ugh, just fucking nuke him. Ugh. On one occasion, he was performing this very commonplace practice of shitting with the door just wide open, and he was talking to his national security advisor, George Bundy. His national security advisor. So, while discussing national security with the president while he was shitting in front of his very eyes, Bundy decided he didn't really want to make direct eye contact with the leader of the free world as food waste violently evacuated his rectum. For some reason, I couldn't imagine why personally. So Bundy turns around to face the wall and Johnson yells at him to come closer so he can keep talking to him. Bundy sort of hits a but in reverse, Tim! and backs closer to the president while still facing the wall until he trips, <laughs> falling ass first into the president's lap while he was still shitting. He's just sitting there on his knee like he's a fucking mall Santa. Now we don't know exactly what happened next, but you have to assume that they just locked eyes and started passionately smooching right there on the spot. Johnson also pissed really just wherever he was at the moment that he needed to, including the parking lot of the White House, several surrounding bushes, and all of the sinks. To relax when he was out of the White House and on his ranch, Johnson would cruise around in his car, just slamming beers naturally, while the Secret Service tailed him, presumably to cover up any pedestrians the president might strike in the process. On one of these occasions, the president pulled over to get out and piss on the side of the road. His secret service rushed out of their cars to give him cover while he did so. After they were in this little position, the wind changed and caused Johnson's piss stream to just go directly onto one of their legs. When the agent on which the president was pissing on said something to the effect of, Hey, uh, sir? You're, uh, uh, you're pissing on my leg. The president said, quote, I know, that's my prerogative. <laughs> Immediately after moving into the White House, Johnson was apparently disappointed with the state of his shower's water pressure. Understandable, nobody likes a limp stream. Especially if you're the president, you know, that shit should be gushing, I don't fault him for that. But in addition to requesting that the pressure be that of a fire hose, he also requested that a special nozzle be put in to face directly at his penis. Which 
sounds uh, painful, honestly. I, I, I don't know why you'd want that. Maybe that could be somewhat enjoyable if it wasn't the pressure of a fire hose. In the end, the president's shower was equipped with your standard shower head and then six additional body nozzles. He basically just wanted to step into one of those little circular x-ray tubes you go through in the airport and just get body blasted in every fold and orifice for five seconds and come out sparkling. This man must have hated scrubbing. Because of the Rube Goldberg inspired layout of its construction, this thing was constantly breaking down and had to be replaced completely at least five times. Reportedly after Johnson asked for this and the staff complained that such a thing was going to be costly, impractical, and borderline Bond villain-esque, Johnson said, If I can move 10,000 troops in a day, you can certainly fix the bathroom any way I want it. His shower ended up costing tens of thousands of classified taxpayer dollars that had been allocated to the president's security. So the president might not have had the required funds to maintain his own safety, but at least his dick was clean. So in 1964, the year after Kennedy's little cranial oopsie daisy, Johnson's free ride was over and he had to actually run for president like a normal person. He was up against Republican Senator Barry Goldwater, kind of like the gold water that the president whizzed onto the leg of that Secret Service agent. <laughs> to drum up some support, Johnson invited White House reporter Frank Cormier and two of his colleagues onto Air Force One for a conference. Now apparently this was a hot day, a real scorcher. So the president, in his infinite wisdom, followed the teachings of the prophet Nelly. It's He started with his shirt, talking about social reform, moved on to his pants while discussing geopolitics, then proceeded to, as Frank puts it, shuck off his underwear while he was discussing the economy. Now apparently he did have a towel, but instead of using it to, I don't know, cover his cock in front of three grown men on an airplane, he just kind of flailed it around while articulating himself. Yeah, we really need to focus on bolstering the agricultural sector. I mean, these fucking hippies, they're just wreaking havoc everywhere. Communists, every one of them. Hey, you guys ever seen anything as big as this? By the way, he fucking crushed Goldwater. Look at this. Is that the ocean right there? All I see is blue. I guess it's true what they say. Sex sells. In addition to having a problem with taking his dick out of his pants, Johnson apparently also had a problem while it was still in there. Apparently he always had a problem with the way that the pants fit, which could be why he was taking them off in public more than MC Hammer. And his issue is one that we can all relate to. His cock and balls were just too damn big. There wasn't any room in there. The poor fellas were suffocating, I tell you. But once he became president, he decided, if I can move 10,000 troops in a day, and they can fix my shower any way I want it, and I can get naked on a plane while in an active press conference for my re-election campaign and then win in an absolute landslide, and if I can pee on men who kill people for a living with absolutely no recourse, then I can get some pants that don't choke my sperm shooter, goddammit! So Johnson calls up a tailor, and uh, why don't you just listen for yourself? Hello? Hello? Uh, Mr. Hager? Yes, this is Joe Hager. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, is your father the one that uh, makes uh, clothes? Yes, sir. We're all together. You all made me some real lightweight slacks uh, uh, that he just made up on his own, sent to me three or four months ago. It's a kind of a light brown and a light green, rather soft green and soft brown. Yes, now, I need about six pairs for summer wear. Yes, sir. I need about six pairs uh, to wear around in the evening when I come in from work. Yes, and. I can send you a pair. I want them a half an inch larger in the waist than they were before, except I want two or three inches of stuff left back in there so I can take them up. I vary 10 or 15 pounds a month. So uh, leave me at least two and a half, three inches in the back where I can let them out or take them up and put it, make these a half an inch bigger in the waist, make the pockets at least an inch longer. Money, uh, My money and my knife and everything fall out. We just Hello. Hello. Now, another thing, the crotch down where your nuts hang is always a little too tight. So when you make them up, give me an inch that I can let out there uh, because they cut me. They're just like riding a, a wire fence. These are almost these are the best that I've had anywhere in the United States. Right. But uh, uh, when I gain a little weight, they cut me under there. So leave me 
you never do have much margin there. Let's see if you can't leave me about an inch from the, where the zipper ends, uh, round uh, under my back to my bunghole. So I can let it out there if I need to. Now, be sure you got the best zippers in them. These are good that I have. And uh, if you get those to me, I would sure be grateful. Uh, where would you like to spend, please? White House. Uh, I just sure will appreciate this. I need it more than anything. And uh, uh, now, you give this boy the address, because I'm running for a funeral, and give him address just how to dress these trousers. So we'll send them to you. And don't you, you get the measurements out of them and add a half inch to the back. Give us an inch to the pockets and about an uh, inch underneath uh, so we can let them out. Now, would you like just a little more stride in the crotch? Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Okay, here he is. Glad you okay, go ahead, please. You're on your way to a funeral, nuts getting cut like a wire fence, got to call up the tailor, get more room down by your bunghole. We've all been there. Ladies, <laughs> am I right? I'm going to close out the video with this one because I think it is just... Uh. I think that this single action sums up the post-World War II American military industrial complex and its geopolitical behavior better than any scholar or poet ever could. This is 100% real. During the middle of the Vietnam War, America was getting pretty fucking sick and tired of it. It was very unpopular. Terrible news coverage, daily protests, dirty hippies rioting and humping each other in the streets. It was anarchy. During a meeting where Johnson was speaking with some reporters off the record, they were asking some pretty tough questions. Questions like, what are we doing in Vietnam? What is your goal for Vietnam? Why haven't you pulled out of Vietnam? And Johnson, frustrated, whipped his dick out, plopped it on the table, pointed at it, and yelled, that's why. So yeah, that's the guy who led the entire country and took his dick out all the time. Wild stuff. If you like the video, uh, like the video, silly ass. If you didn't like the video, why are you here? At this point, you must have liked it a little bit. So just like, like it just a little bit, like just kind of like, like just tap the like button, just gingerly picking. Leave a comment about your dick. Is it short? Is it long? Is it discolored? Is it a vagina? And if so, does it have balls? These are the questions America needs answers to. Lastly, be more like the president, undress for success, whip your dick out, and just slap it right on the subscribe button. It really does help me out, gets me motivated to make more of these. And if you really want more content like this, take your dick out again, insert it into your wallet, wrap it around some money, take it out, whip it out, and just give me like a, like cents on my Patreon or on the donation button below. I am so, so poor. The bank is gonna come repossess my computer and take my kneecaps. So if you don't give me the same amount uh, that you would give like a homeless person or even like a little bit less, then you are personally going to be responsible for Capital One taking my teeth. And with that, good night. I love you. Sleep tight and I will see you in the morning. Chevy. I see where you are. Did I really? I didn't know it, but uh, that paper's got a big headline in it. What does it say? I didn't see it. President Johnson was endangered Saturday when a convertible in which he was riding was forced into a narrow shoulder of a farm road to avoid a collision. The incident occurred as Governor Connolly drove Johnson around his Floresville ranch. A Texas highway patrolman speeded up a hill to pass the motorcade and met an oncoming car had to cut sharply in front of the president's car. Conley slowed and moved on to the shoulder. The incident did not interrupt the tour. Conley continued to point out sights on each side of the road. <laughs> now, I'm afraid to go to church. Every time I go, they say I'm driving 100 miles an hour. And I did get up to about 70 watching it one time, and maybe 80.
But uh, I was very cautious and careful of the people I was with. And I did have a half a uh, 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 paper cup full of beer. Maybe we can get through LBJ in that period. Oh, yes, I can do that. Um, okay. You know, there's this terrible book out on it. It's a terrible uh, book. Oh, I know it by uh, George Reedy. It. Did you read, is it Reedy's book? No, oh, no, no, this no, new Carol book. book. Yeah. Uh, it gets a rave review from uh, Clifton Fadiman in the Book of the Month. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Stand by. Shit, it makes him feel like a goddamn animal. Mm -hmm. Quiet. Of course he was. 